Caddis Maximus here. This time we're reviewing uh, universal joints, swivel sockets, and increasers and reducers, adapters. And I have a huge selection here, uh, over 75 pieces, and so I thought it was a good review just to do of these so you can see uh, how the sizes compare from quarter inch all the way up through inch drive. Although I don't have any inch drive universal sockets, I do have the adapters. And to just quickly discuss uh, general practices and then compare a variety of different brands just so you can get an idea. And so I'll do quick uh, pauses or cuts as I compare sizes and stuff. That way you don't have to actually watch me pick up all the sockets and to try to make the video uh, not be three hours long. Quickly, the difference between you I would call universals or swivels. Uh, they both are essentially the same thing, but if you want to get more tactical, a uh, swivel is a smoother, heavier-duty action like in these impacts where they have a pin drive. Uh, and a universal is like this where it's a bit lighter duty, but it has more articulation and can get around in tighter spaces. Another thing, quick thing to note about standard universals, uh, some like Craftsman's, I've reviewed some Craftsman sockets, they make a big taper right here so that they won't jam up. If you get one of these universals in a position like this, it will want to lock up, but it limits its motion. And ones that have long tines like this have a little bit more motion and they can operate beyond 45 degrees. They're a little notchy and clunky because of the way the joints are offset, but they're a real lifesaver and they're smaller diameter than their impact counterparts. The impact counterparts are, are constant velocity joints. Uh, the pin drive and the ball socket uh, is the universal standard and is very smooth. It only has 30 degrees of articulation, um, but they work just perfectly, absolutely perfectly. The only uh, exceptions would be like these power belts here, which use a hex drive system in there. Not quite as good. It's not as smooth. It's chunky. Um, and then they have this little feature where you can push them in and they'll lock up straight, or you can pull them out and use them as a universal, although it's a little funky to use. And then, of course, the final exception would be these Pittsburgh Professionals here. Um, I may even do a, a quick little review of these by themselves. Um, is These are advertised as impact sockets, but they're traditionally designed universal joints, and they will not take anywhere near as much force as their you know, uh, pin drive real impact counterparts. So just because they call it impact and carbon coat, it doesn't actually mean that it is impact rated. Let's do a quick, a quick couple of quick size comparisons so you can get an idea how they scale and then talk about some design, other design features of universal joints. Doing this comparison kind of shows a lot non-linear scaling um, of sockets. A quarter, a half inch is a, obviously it's more than twice what a quarter inch, a ca half inch is four times the strength of a quarter inch. And when you go up to three quarter inch, you can see how it scales again. The half inch uh, looks really small, and that's not even doubling from half inch. So as the scale goes up, they proportionally get much and much bigger percentage-wise, and I wanted to point that out. And here we go. The same is generally said for their uh, non-impact counterparts, and this also allows me to... Sh um, some designs just use a uh, screw, a socket head cap screw, uh, advantages to it is if it breaks or something, you can eat more easily rebuild it and take it apart. Uh, disadvantages is, is um, because you have the socket head and makes this flange where the head is countersunk really thin. Power builds do that too. Many other manufacturers don't do that. They just run a solid pin through like these power belt and this uh, Armstrong. And the scaling is the same way. The, the three quarter inch just looks way larger than any of the others just because of how you have to scale. And then this is just a little proto quarter inch. And to compare a bunch of different brands, we have uh, pretty much everything here uh, from the Pittsburgh Pro, Powerbelt, Mastercraft Pro, we've got Proto, Williams, SK, Pennons. What's interesting is about the really old Universal joints, and you can tell as they ran rivets and then they expanded the rivet over the outside, uh, I did like that. I mean, there, those pins are as in there as you can get. They s stopped doing that just because they started being uh, interfering, just because there was this protrusion from the side of the socket. Other things that have been done on old ones is like this uh, ancient half-inch drive Craftsman, which is really weird. Uh, it's narrow to make space for the heads of those rounded-over pins, but it's essentially a 3 8 
square on a half inch universal. And I can see why they stopped doing this. This thing probably broke uh, left and right. This photo also shows the dramatic differences in heights from various designs. For some reason, these Harbor Freight ones are just really long. I don't know if because they try to advertise them as being impact that uh, they make them longer to have, take advantage of some torsion. Uh, but they're just incredibly long. And that's really why I got them was uh, it's having different links like this will allow you to more easily reach the fastener in an optimum fashion. Sometimes if these are too short, you're uh, not quite able to reach fully. If they're too long, then they're bending over at too steep of an angle and are difficult to use. So it's nice to have different lengths of these. One other thing to talk about is whether you can put two of these together. And the answer is yes, you can. But with the standard universals, they really start getting out of control uh, when you do that. The only way you can really get away with it is if you have some way of holding the center section with your fingers or there's some area where it's able to hit and brace against to keep it under control. Otherwise, the center section will just uh, want to bind up on you and you'll just break these in no time. When it comes to the impact versions, you can actually get away with putting two of them together. And that's why I have two of these quarter inch ones. It's due to the nature of their the smooth action of the CV joint and a little bit more limited range of motion. You can actually... And if one, this end's going to be on a fastener so it's more secure, you can actually get away with uh, having two un impact universal joints together. And that's a nice aspect. Technically, uh, you could even get away with three of them if you had a way of supporting, once again, uh, the middle ones so they don't get too out of control. Um, and that's a real nice, another real nice aspect of the impacts is being able to effectively put two of them together um, you get 60 degrees of motion and a little bit more extension, but it still rotates all nice and smoothly. The last thing to mention is on the impacts, they don't always make them the same direction. This one's the opposite. It's pointed the opposite direction where the rotating ball parts, actually the driven part and the whole socket parts, the drive part. And then to do another quick comparison, we have all these 3 8 universals. Pretty much all are designed the same. Um, any good brand there's not a lot of difference one thing to look for is these ones and i mentioned that earlier with uh the straight tines is they can go on steeper angles but they tend to want to jam up we have other ones like these master crafts where they use a taper where in this power belt where they're less likely to jam up but they do limit some of their motion and to show you how similar i mean we've got pittsburgh mastercraft pro power belt proto challenger sk uh pennons uh, I mean, they're all pretty much the, really the same. That's why we're going to move over to adapters now. So we've got the 3 8 to quarter inch drive reducers. Redu these are the ones that always break because, of course, you have a larger drive trying to go into a smaller drive and either the socket breaks or the little square breaks. And that's just part of the deal with using adapters. Uh, they're not really, you're always supposed to use the proper socket. Um, but adapters uh, often are used because you have to put two extensions together to get some more length or you just don't have the right size socket in 3 8 and uh, so you need a quarter inch and it happens to be a little bit stuck so that's why these things are around but also why I've collected up so many adapters because uh, they're small, they're cheap, they're easy to find used because they always follow the bottom of old toolboxes and nobody ever digs, out, digs around down the bottom of them. Um, and that's where you end up finding them. And because you break them so easily, it's just so nice to have, okay, I broke one, we'll just do another extra. And we have Mastercraft Pro, uh, a Powerbuilt, uh, a Proto, a Matco. We have an older and newer generation Harbor Freights. And then we have our increasers. These are Protos. We have an older and a newer Snap-on. And they did change the forging on those. Those are pretty darn nice. Some things like the Protos, and I will mention... Use a pretty thin drive on them, which is just fine uh, because it's a on the increaser. Or excuse me, it's not just fine. I'm backwards. Uh, you would think it they would make it a little thicker because it is an increaser. Like on these snap-ons. Whoop. Here. 
where they really made it nice and thick and heavy duty because uh, really when it comes to an increaser, uh, it should be strong enough where the drive always fails. Like this increaser, you should be able to break 10 ratchets with this increaser because uh, it's an increaser. It should always be stronger than the ratchet that's being attached to it. Um, and I wanted to point that out about this Mac impact increasers. They really took that to the next level because this has an incredibly thick drive side. Uh, if I ever do any ratchet tests where I'm breaking ratchets, I'll probably use something like this in a vise. And they do make these in all sizes. We have a couple little quarter inch uh, increasers. There is no quarter inch to smaller. There is Snap-on makes an eighth inch drive ratchet set, I think. And there may be a reducer with that. Um, but they do make quarter inch to three eighths increasers. Um, and those are impact ones. And of course, they have standard chrome ones as well, like that. And they even have oddball ones. This came with the Harbor Freight uh, digital torque meter. And this is a half inch drive to quarter inch. Uh, just for using with the torque meter, because obviously it's pretty ridiculous to have a half inch drive to quarter inch reducer. And speaking of half inch here, this video is getting pretty long. Here is the half inch drive ones. We've got S SK, we've got Proto, Impacts, Napa, uh, Craftsman, some Harbor Freights. Uh, we have Snap-on, and I'll show you on the, the uh, next larger size I have of this. Uh, but the Snap-on reducers, I think, are the strongest in the industry. When you get their nice, heavy-duty ones, they actually use a uh, cold rolled steel square inserted into an impact socket, which is the best. Because instead of just trying to rely on the impact, like chrome molybdenum, um, is not going to be strong as chrome vanadium, but you know, you're on the risk of it breaking. So that's why they make them out of chrome molybdenum. And you can use chrome vanadium with the right heat treatment. But why I like snap on is because they just use an impact socket and it's driving a very hard square. Uh, so that is a very durable square and I do approve, definitely approve of that. And then we move over to increasers. Um, and just in half inch drive, they really start getting pretty huge uh, just to deal with all the extra forces. The one thing I wanted to point out over here, we have a few different generations of protos. Uh, and they've been just about the same for a long time. This is interesting. And for a while, they had 5 8 inch drive. You can see it's smaller than this 3 quarter inch. Trying to make a drive that was government only to reduce uh, missing tools from government. Um, but it just became too expensive. They were charging more because they had to custom machine uh, 5 8 drive tools and sockets, etc., only for the government. And then when the government wanted to buy tools from another manufacturer, they said, we don't make 5 8 inch drive. And so uh, it only lasted, I think, just a couple of decades before most manufacturers gave up on it. Some still do make tools and adapters for existing stock, but that's about it. And once again, the size comparison, we have the four major sizes. Actually, three of these are protos. I kind of don't know how that happened. Um, and, you know, three-eighths to quarter inch, half inch to three-eighths. That's an SK. Um, three-quarter inch to half inch. And then this is inch to three-quarter inch. And you can see uh, that it scales hugely, hugely compared to the rest of them. And finally, I'll show you a general practice that is not recommended. And finally, for the end of my weird video about adapters and universals and reducers and increasers near the end, is this is a generally uh, not a good practice. You don't want to stack reducers uh, because then you're asked, obviously, the smallest one you're just going to break. If you were to actually do something like this, run an inch down to a quarter inch, you wouldn't even feel the quarter inch failing. Uh, it, it would just be like, oh, it broke. I couldn't even feel it. And the same goes for increasing. You don't want to try to increase from a quarter inch, you know, up through massive because that would just be ridiculous. Also, don't stack increasers like this to use as an extension uh, because that's a pretty ridiculous extension. Uh, an inch, this is, would be considered, I mean, this is literally an inch drive in and out extension, but it goes down to a quarter inch. So uh, generally recommended, don't do that because it'll just break tools, uh, even on the lightest of fasteners. And on a final note, is we're going to take another look at this three quarter inch to half inch drive uh, heavy duty snap on reducer just to show again that um, hard steel insert into the socket. And then they just use a roll pin to hold it in place. Um, and I think on my three or my uh, half inch to three eighths, it's gotten a little loose. You can just pop the roll pin out. That makes it another advantage because if this breaks, you can push the roll pin out and actually replace this section without replacing the socket. And I thought, 
that was real interesting as well. Anyway, that was my big long video about reducers and adapters. Some of these back here, these are a couple more of the snap-on increasers, uh, which are pretty nice. Some of these larger sockets will also have these buttons in them, so it's easier to release them when they're uh, attached to sockets that are like this, where they have the retaining the square edge with retaining pin so you don't have to have a nail or something to push in to release it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.